This is my little Japanese maple. Chase was, my oldest was just about to start kindergarten. Uh, Chance was a baby. We moved into this old house in Clanton and uh, redid it. And we lived there for about 19 years. We moved out when my youngest Chance graduated from high school, we moved out because we always had a goal set to buy a farm, move out to the country. And um, when we got there, there was this beautiful old Japanese maple. People would stop on the side of the road and ask if they could have cuttings or something off of the maple and just talk about how beautiful it was. One year, I guess it was just the perfect conditions for it. I get, I think the rain, the, the temperatures, everything must have been just right and just perfect because we had a million little seedlings just all over the yard from this Japanese maple. So I went out and dug up about 300 of them and potted them all up and grew them up and I ended up giving tons of them away to friends, family, sharing sharing them with people. And um, I sold a bunch of them one time to raise money for a mission trip we were uh, going on. Out of all those, I ended up with two. And I have this one, and then I have this one over here by the storage building. This one's kind of sad looking. It gets a lot of sun right here, and it struggled a lot this summer, but it's going to be okay. I've got pictures of the boys, like, almost every Easter climbing up in that tree. So, this tree is very sentimental to me, and I'm so happy that I ended up with at least two of them to have on our property. Now this tree is a autumn blaze maple. It's so pretty. It's that fire color too. It's that orange and red and yellow. So pretty. So this is autumn blaze maple. It gets probably 60 feet tall and We've got one planted here in the front yard near the potage. I can see it right out my kitchen window. I'm hoping it's gonna lend me some shade on this corner of the house one day. When my dad passed away a few years ago, everybody at Petals went in together and bought me some trees um, in memory of my dad. He loved Gatlinburg in the fall. He loved to go to Gatlinburg. And the fall color just was something we always did. We went every year. So I thought it would just be perfect to plant trees in my dad's memory with the fall color. This is up at the road at our entrance. This is where we've got the trees planted in my dad's memory. The first row is Chinese pistache. I've got three of those. My second row is October glories and two of them have died. You can see this one died this year in the drought. So we're going to pull that one up and add another 
October Glory right here. And then behind these, we have Florida Sugar Maples. And two of those died last year. So I only have one of those left. So we're gonna um, transplant this lonely sugar maple up to the house so that we can use it for some shade. And then I've got three autumn blaze that I'm gonna put down this row. This is the Florida sugar maple, which has that beautiful yellow fall color. It, um, the Florida sugar maple can tolerate our heat a little better and still give us good fall color. This one is Autumn Blaze. This is gorgeous. It's got the beautiful orange, yellow, red foliage. Looks like fire. And this one is October Glory Maple. It's more of the red color. And then that one is another Autumn Blaze. Beautiful. And look at the fall color on the Muscadons. And that one is another October Glory. Are Chinese pistache trees. They're just now starting to get their color, but they are just beautiful. There'll be two, three, four different colors on here at one time. So pretty. And these grow really fast. They're drought tolerant, heat tolerant, fast growing, good shade trees, and great fall color. Look how pretty this old-fashioned garden chrysanthemum is. It's a perennial. And this one is Ryan's Pink, which is my favorite. There's all different kinds. There's Gloria's Thanksgiving Day Mom, which is like a magenta pink colored. There's Empress of China, I believe. That is a double full pink. There's Judy's Yellow. And there's Kathy's Rust, which is an orange rust color. There's all different colors, but this Ryan's Pink is my absolute favorite. And look at all the life happening here. There's so many different insects on here. Look at that one. There's honeybees. The honeybees are loving it. Bumblebees, wasp. Um, let's see what else is on here. There's a honeybee, love bugs, all kinds of little tiny native bees. I mean, there's all different kinds on here. That's awesome. That is awesome to give them some food this time of year. All kinds of pollinators and beneficials and some beautiful fall color in the garden. Look how pretty it is. It is with this cat mint. Now this one, see how it's falling over? This is what happens if you don't cut it back around July, for us anyway. Because when spring comes, it starts uh, growing, getting its foliage and everything. And then about July, you need to come in and cut it back somewhat. About a third or so just cut it back a little bit 
and then by fall it'll be prettier instead of falling over but I didn't cut this one back in July I didn't do this one but I've got this sprinkled all throughout my garden in different areas to the front edge but they're all young this is the one that's really showing out I've got one over here by the garden shed that looks really pretty and this one I did cut back um, around July or so I did cut it back some and see how much prettier it is it's not all leggy and falling over it's beautiful and I love it with this Valerie Finnis Artemisia as a contrast I love this it usually is about three feet tall but with the drought and all this year it started looking really bad and I just cut it all the way to the ground and it's starting to come back out of it but of course when it gets when we have frost it'll die all the way to the ground again but it'll come out this spring that silver foliage is such a pretty contrast with this Ryan's pink chrysanthemum I love using these in the garden for fall color. 